Mic's off, camera's off, launch it. Okay. Uh, Representative Katz, could you just for the, the front of the tape, for ID purposes, tell us your name and your position? And yes, Lois Caps, and I represent the 23rd Congressional District in the United States House of Representatives. Uh, in, in 1969, uh, what, what was your occupation? I was a young mother living in uh, the community and uh, raising my family, had moved uh, to this area from graduate school studies of my husband. He was a new young professor at UC Santa Barbara and I was living, uh, we were living in Goleta. We saw the ocean as an important part of our family life because it was a focus of our recreation. Do you remember what you were doing um, when you first heard about the spill? I don't, I don't remember it specifically because it, it was a major news item, um, but the effects of it, it took just a little bit of time to, to be absorbed by most of us. Um, uh, those who were right on the shore immediately reacted and knew, though none of us knew how permanent and long-lasting and devastating the impact would be it, that unfolded over time it seemed to be like a nightmare that never stopped how did it make you feel violated it's a very powerful experience to be at the front line of an environmental disaster uh, i can only uh, think with great feeling about those who are living in the area that uh, experienced the earthquake in, in Japan. Um, it, it is, it, it's earth-shaking, uh, an accident of such significant, or an event of such significant magnitude. And over the, fir the first couple of months, you know, the initial first couple of months, were you involved in any way in the activities? Yes, not formally. You know, I, we, I wasn't a part of the movement then that, that uh, grew very rapidly, uh, of first responders, if you will, uh, that seized upon every mechanism they could find, straw, uh, all of that. Uh, we would go down and help a little bit with that part of it, but it was more observing. It. it was more seeing the effect of it that made such an impression upon me. And over a longer period of time, um, were you, how, did you become involved over a longer period of time with coastal activities? Yes, but not formally again. As just as a community member who watched to see that uh, and noticed that there was a strong reaction uh, throughout the country, really, uh, to um, to this event, you know, the Coastal Commission was created as a result. So many things happened as a result of that act, uh, of that event. Uh, just the following year, Senator Gaylord Nelson visited the area to see and was so struck by how, uh, uh, how much the impact was still being felt that uh, the, the phrase Earth Day uh, and the, the significant, the, he said we can never forget this. So they, they, they invented or, or set aside Earth, a day calling it Earth Day, which we celebrate and celebrated this year again. Mm -hmm. And um, what, in the longer term now, um, this is where we come forward into to the present day. Um, how would you, uh, if you were addressing your con constituents with regard to the protection of the coast, what recommendations would you make to them as to what they can do to, um, to protect the coast? Maybe I'll just rephrase some of what I said uh, at this year's Earth Day celebration, which, uh, to which about 38,000 people came again. It's a lot of people because this is a movement that has not died off. It's, I believe, only gotten stronger over time. As we have seen other disasters unfold, other events take place which threaten uh, our way of life, our health, and our livelihood uh, because of what the impacts are to our environment. As I reminded uh, those folks in this very ce celebratory uh, ga the gathering uh, that we're, uh, we see the demonstrations of how much progress has been made in clean cars uh, and buildings and people are, are um, celebrating, uh, the, I, I always want them to make 
to, to focus their energies as well on making sure that policies are implemented and stay strong uh, to put teeth into uh, the movement to get to give voice to uh, in legislative ways to to their enthusiasm about protecting the environment and I reminded them of that what we see today in the United States House of Representatives um, fortunately not in the Senate as yet is a strong reaction against the very protections that were put into place because of this bill in 1969. 1969 was a terrific catalyst uh, to a, a whole set of regulations. We had none before then. The Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the NEPA, the National uh, Environmental Policy at Action Act and uh, the Environmental Protection Agency that was created. You know, we had the Love Canal and uh, Cuyahoga River that were burning. We had so many events at that time that gave strong reason for us to take legislative action. But now, you know, the, uh, we, we see uh, a sort of a um, resurgence of a pushback against those uh, those uh, actions uh, and I'm working in a climate that is very difficult in terms of protecting our environment. Uh, let me phrase it this way, when, when you have the opportunity to speak with the President um, about how, what needs to be done, the single uh, the, or the highest priorities in terms of protecting the coast. What, what, what will you say to him? Well, I have said this, and, and I, I take great pride in the fact that this is a president who said and acted uh, and, and urged us in Congress uh, at the beginning of his administration that this is going to be, this is the century of energy to focus on energy as an economic driver for our entire uh, country throughout this century. That it, we will see, and there's terrific global competition in the area of energy, we will see that, that the goals of being energy self-sufficient, which has to do with our environment because that's the way we switch from being so dependent on fossil fuels and foreign countries that produce oil, uh, which we use as our basis for energy now, uh, that that is destructive not only uh, to our environment but also to our national security. And since we only produce uh, about 2% of the world's oil and consume about a quarter of it, we'll never get to that point of self-sufficiency until we shift to clean energy. And that is uh, the appropriate response to the spill in 1969, it is an appropriate response to where we want to be now, but we had this horrible event last year in the Gulf of Mexico, and we don't have the same outcry in terms of legislative needs today. In fact, what we've seen, uh, and, and the President isn't in favor of this, but the Congress, the House of Representatives, is now busy undoing those protections that were put into place now. Then. Uh, in 1969 and in the 70s. So what uh, we need today and what the president knows is we need a restart of environmental protections uh, that will prevent future spill or go, help us prevent future oil spills and, and we need to put, go in the, a different direction. That's, that's the questions. Um, you know what, there, there's only one other and if you, uh, I, I, there's nothing that I could ask that would improve on what you've already said, honestly. Well. I, except I do want the answer to the question, and you can address uh, Janet, uh, is what, in your opinion, is the most ominous threat to uh, the California coast as we speak? Let me think for a minute how to phrase this. There is not one specific, let me talk for a second, talk through. Rachel, because I want to say, actually it's climate change in, in many respects. So it's a combination of and I haven't talked about this either. To help you brainstorm. Yeah. There actually, and I, maybe you know the reference to this, they mentioned it at the Ormond Beach Task Force yesterday, that there's a new report out that the amount of sea level rise is going to be higher 
based on you know their mm -hmm. new modeling that they've done. I don't know if this can yes. to your comments. Yes, it will. Okay, phrase, say it again because then and then I'll answer it to you. Right. Mm -hmm. What and in, what, in your opinion, is the most <clears throat> ominous threat to the California coastline? The most ominous threat to the California coastline is the threat and the real presence and the existence of changes to our climate that have come about by us, that have, uh, over the years of our uh, not paying attention to what, how uh, we use energy and the fact that the way we use it has been destructive uh, of the climate, of the ozone layer. We are now beginning to see, and are seeing it in dramatic ways throughout nature, but how I'm so uh, concerned, one of the ways I'm so concerned is the impact it's having on our ocean. The acidification of ocean, the changing of the makeup of the ocean in the way that it can support the habitat there, which we are so dependent upon. We are dependent upon the ocean for our very lives. And we are really uh, uh, in a dangerous position uh, when we allow the, ch the effects on the climate to continue unmitigated uh, and, and, the, uh, and, and we're seeing the ocean rise. Uh, it's impacting parts of the world in very dramatic ways, but it will impact the California coastline. There's no question. And we have a chance. We still have that window of opportunity through our behavior and through our, the laws that we use to guide our behavior to lessen that impact and to allow uh, to allow the cl the globe, this fragile globe that we inhabit, uh, to it, it do it heal itself the best it, it can, and we, with our help it can. But we are really at such a significant crossroads now. And those of us who live on the coast have, I believe, a, a, a unique opportunity and a responsibility. And it starts in the classroom uh, that our we need to see this resource as the valuable part of our life that it is, the integral part of our very being as so important. And we also need to see that we have such an important role in making sure that it is not damaged beyond repair. Janet, did you ask, uh, that was very nicely put, did you ask the students in the gymnasium question? Uh, I changed it to the constituents. M may I? Sure. One more. Oh yeah. Uh, because you you brought it up in your last. And actually, class. I'd like I'd like to do something that t touches on a classroom, if that's where you and think this will that's, be. That's where it's going to be. So imagine that you're standing in front mm -hmm. of a in a gymnasium in front of 500 uh, high school students headed for college, and there was one uh, or, or several pieces of advice, whether it's about activism or environmental concerns that you could give them. What would you say to that audience? When. It, Imagining myself addressing a, a, a several hundred high school students getting ready to go to college is a delightful thought because I used to work as a, I, in the schools as a school nurse, and I miss very much the energy that comes around being uh, uh, comes from being around young people. So I can hear myself saying to let me. I'm going to start this over because okay. I don't like the way it sounded. Yeah. The uh, image of being able to stand in front of about five or six hundred high school students is a delightful one for me, since I spent uh, many years of my life at, in a school, in the schools, as a nurse, as a public health nurse, and miss very much the energy that young people have about life. And I am so um, interested in their. Uh, being the future leaders, which they will be, and as they step away from the high school life and go on with their lives and see themselves in going on to school, hopefully, and in continuing their education in some way, I want them to know that we are dependent on them to be the kind of leaders in their world uh, where they see the value and the importance of the ocean 
in their lives and in our lives together and that they dedicate themselves in some way uh, wh and whether it is through their occupation or their future lives in protecting that resource and and know that they have a very vital role to play and all the way from the the occupation that they choose to engage in which could it be affected that way, but just in the way that they appreciate and value and work uh, with the environment to protect it. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Do you think I could ask just as a favor for Janet because she's put so much work into this? Sure. May I take a photograph of the two of you? Oh, sure. Oh, that would be Do you that think this will be funny. useful for your documentary? Oh, it's so fun for me. Of course it is. Of course it is. And uh, how many kind? Uh, how many P interviews are you doing? We're going. Well, including her oh, okay plus, and plus we had some from the previous documentary which was called sands on oil and gas and we had linda crop Bob oh good Solon, naomi schwartz oh these are the giants uh, of this movement ellen stern harris did you know ellen mm -mm. she was from beverly hills and was called the uh the mother of the coastal act she went back to um you know the very active from the late 60s on to get to um, get passage of um Prop 20. Oh, okay. The, well, Sarah the, Wan is in that generation and, and as well. Sarah, yeah. Sarah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bob Solon. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. These, are, these were people. And the one person, I think, who's, who's made, uh, Naomi Schwartz, uh, she's one, a role model for me. Um, wonderful person, person. And was on the first Coastal, coastal Commission. Mm -hmm. Um, and, very, and she was a real leader in the in the movement in the 1969. Yeah. And then the whole group that started GU. Yeah, yeah, we talked to them this week, and wonderful. Aren't they? Uh, Abe, um, Abe yes. Bell, incredibly eloquent. Yes. And also uh, Charlie they have, Eckford. Uh, Charlie, they, good, I'm glad. Then you've got the real people. Astoundingly well, there, See, this eloquent. is, and this is, I guess, way, maybe off the yeah. record, but, you know, if you represent this district, this area in Congress. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah.